Hello there. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fandom Fights. We are here at the final act for a very exciting singles title match. We have the current champion, Robert Kastner, going up against the former champion, Tyler Birch. Nick is here. Yeah. I'm Tim, if I didn't say that already. Uh, Nick, how the hell are you, and what do you think of this matchup? Doing well, Tim. Uh, really excited for this one. Robert Kastner picking up the vacant singles belt uh, in, the, in the previous title match, defeating David Garcia, becoming the rightful uh, Phantom Singles champion. Great match. Uh, claimed after that he wanted the best of the best. He said, hold nothing back. Give me whoever, whoever deserves it the most out of everyone playing. I want them next. So we threw everyone who deserved it most into a big tournament, made them play two people at a time. And, and Tyler Birch ultimately wound up winning that tournament pretty handedly. Beat there some has been playing better than he has ever played before, which is odd, Tim, because one year ago today, Tyler Birch was at this very same match holding the championship, where he lost it to his current teammate, uh, allowing her to become the first ever two time champion. Tyler today trying to become the second. Uh, so lots of stuff happening. Robert looking for his first defense. These two have played before. Uh, Robert was the number one seed in a tournament. Tyler was the number eight seed. Tyler upset Robert in that. So I know Robert is looking for revenge as well. Whole lot of backstory. I'm like Loki holding all the things together, even though I hate that fucking show. Stop doing TV. Go back to movies. Spoiler alert. Uh, Agatha all along is great. Um, great uh, stuff, Nick. Thank you for that uh, history lesson. If I was a good editor, I would edit things over what you said to make it look cool, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, so we will go and talk to the players right now in the promos. <laughs> well, Tyler, I just want to say, I am so proud of how far you've come this year, um, in particular with your confidence. Um, like Cody said, you've always had the knowledge. And I think this year, especially in the woke tournament, it finally, your confidence has finally met your knowledge. And the tournament really showed what a freight train you have become once those two have equal. And yeah, you crushed the competition, including Joe. I think you are ready to get the belt back today. But tell us, uh, how are you feeling? Feeling great. Happy to be here. Happy to do almost exactly the same thing what you did last year. <laughs> beat, Bo beat Joe in a number one contender match to get yeah. to the title. Uh, so we'll see if this one has a different has a different ending. Um, I don't believe it. I will though. Awesome. All right. Well, let's play. Jake. So, yes, Robert. I was always told that you shouldn't repeat history because it's usually bad. So I don't think we should keep that trend alive today if we can help it. God bless. I don't, them. I don't know. Based on certain current events, I'm not sure things will really go that way. But anyway. Uh, I'm happy I can finally be in your corner because um, there have been circumstances where I have not been able to in your ascent to this current point, but it's been, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, you've been working for this for so long. You deserve to be at this spot and you wanted the biggest challenge because I know how competitive you are. You always want to test yourself against the best. Tyler has more than proven that he is worthy of that moniker, but it's really hard to beat you. Uh, like very few people have done it. Uh, Tyler may be one of them, but it's going to be hard for him to do it again because nobody works like you. Nobody competes like you. I believe in you. 
That's all I need. Nick, thoughts on the promos? Normally, I would agree with Robert, but if someone could invent cheese again, I'd be down with that. Sure. Why do you? We have it now. Why do you need it again? Because I'm sure the first time it happened, people were like, "What the fuck is this?" (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, All right, let's get into round number one. Nick, how's it going to work? I don't know it's going to work like this. There's going to be 10 questions. They're all a fan of fights. Each player's going to have 15 seconds to write down their answer. At the end of 15 seconds, we'll say pens down, at which point the players will reveal their answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece. Should any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one, they would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number one? Nope. Nada. Great. Your first question will come in the category of James Bond. In which James Bond film does Bond drive a double-decker bus during a chase? I'm more of a double-decker burger fan. Fair. I had a burger today. That's good. It had barbecue sauce and onion strings on it. Lovely. It was good. I had a burger yesterday. Three, two, one. Pets down. Let's go to Tyler. I said the spy who loved me. And Robert. I didn't finish what I was going to write, so I'm not going to show it. Okay. Uh, then both are incorrect. We're looking for live and let die. Uh-huh. Live and let die. Uh, your next question. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Live and let die. Um, your next question is in the category of Marvel. What character, or I'm sorry, what character's name appears in both Kingsman the Secret Service and The Amazing Spider-Man 2? Live and let it die. Um, what? How are you, man? Uh, I haven't seen you since in the world of uh, multiplex uh, like an hour ago uh, or a few hours ago. But in the world of uh, uh, life, of this it's been much longer. Yes, I agree. Oh, okay. Five, four. My hair's a little two, one longer. More. Pens on. Yeah, I need a haircut. Uh, let's go to Robert. I said Alexi. And Tyler. I said Harry. Harry is correct. Uh, so Tyler will take a one-point lead. What's next, Nick? Next question comes in the category of Disney animation. In Strange World, what kind of weapon is Jaeger wielding when he is reunited with his son, Searcher? Yes, the answer is Strange World. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, so good. You know what? I think um I might be coming around on that guy. No. Him and I I have been talking. Okay. We're we're I think it's time to make amends. Five. Should people stay Four. tuned to the end of two? One. Pens down. Yeah, probably. Uh let's go to Tyler. I said flamethrower. And Robert. I also said flamethrower. You both are correct. Uh, so it is two to one. Your next question is in the category of sci-fi icons. Who plays Sam's father, Ron Witwicky, in the Transformers franchise? Um, what'd you have to eat today, though? You burger yesterday? What was today? Uh, today? I was slightly hungover, Tim, because I went oh. out. Uh, I went out. Yeah, I don't drink a whole lot anymore. But yesterday was a friend's birthday. I was I told them I was like, I'm gonna go for like an hour and then leave. It didn't stay long. So when I was in New York and you had like three beers with me, was that a lot for you nowadays? Nowadays, yes, but at that time, not so much. Oh fair. One pens down. Uh let's go to Robert. Kevin Dunn. And Tyler. Kevin Dunn. Both are correct. Nick, what is next? Your next question will come in the category of the wizarding world. <clears throat> In Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, how many total characters does Hermione use the spell Obliviate on? Um, but I did eat today. We went and got something called Duck Donuts. I don't know. I know it's a chain, but I don't know how far reaching it is. It's so freaking good. I had like four donuts. Which you love did a good not donut. Help me what? I love a good donut. Yeah. Then I had this like little turkey Thanksgiving mix we make. It's got like corn and stuff. It's very good. I'll tell you about it later. Hands down, please. Uh, let's go to Tyler. I said three. And Robert. 
I said four. Four is the correct answer. So the four characters being both of her parents and then uh, Rowie and Dolahov. Dolahov? I don't remember. The Rowie? guys from the thing that... The, yeah, you yeah. and it. then she's like, Ron is like, you better spell... Yeah, it's such a douche in that part. Uh, anyway, uh, your next question uh, is coming from the category of American Spies. Which American Spies character has done the following? Saved an ally from drowning? Had a bounty on their head? And killed someone in a public bathroom. Thoughts on public bathrooms? Uh gross. Truthfully, gross. I like. I would like to remake. This might public. be too far, but I don't care. It's the end of the year, and we're celebrating. Um, I would never poop in a public bathroom. Pee only. Sorry, ladies. Brittany, I'm sorry, but yeah, no. The I, I every time Maggie goes to a public bathroom, I say I'm so sorry. That you have to sit in here. It's terrible. Would never do it. Are you gonna count down or five, four, three, <laughs> two, one? Pence down. That's what I was waiting for. Uh, let's go to Robert and uh, Tyler. Is it Ilsa Faust? Ilsa Faust is correct. Uh, so Tyler taking uh, another one point lead. It is four to three. What is next, Nick? Your next question comes in the category of Pixar. In Cars 3, how is the character Cal related to Strip Weathers? My nephew, who is 11, mm. tonight at uh, dinner says to me, Uncle, you want to know something weird? And I said, sure, buddy, what's up? And he goes, you know the movie Monsters, Inc.? And I said, yeah, buddy. And he goes, there's a character from Toy Story in it. I think they're made by the same people. And I went, it's possible. <laughs> it would have been funny if he was like, no, Movie Monsters, Inc. It's what? shit. Pants down. That's a crap film. Uh, let's go to Mr. Birch. I said son. And Mr. Kastner. No, I said uncle. No. Uh, how is the character Cal related, related to Strip? To Cal would be the nephew. nephew. So I don't think we can take either answer, right? Right. Okay. So yeah, they would be that would be incorrect. Sorry, I had to think about that one for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So four to three still. Uh, both missed that one. Your next question is in the category of the MCU, and your question is: the songs "Going Up the Country," "Save It for Later," and "Can't You Hear Me Knocking" all appear in which MCU film? I really want to sing one of those, but I can't. Oh, you could? Nah, I think it would give it away. But, like, you have the ability? Oh, yeah, I have the ability. Yeah, like, I know one of them you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Yes. The the third one I know quite well. Okay. well. Guitar Hero 2, baby. Five. Ah, great. Three. Thank you for giving me. One. Hands down. Uh, let's go to Robert. Is it Spider-Man Homecoming? And Tyler. I don't know. I just said Deadpool and Wolverine. Spider-Man Homecoming is correct. Uh, so it is four to four. What is next? Penultimate question comes in the category of Star Wars. Which Star Wars character is port portrayed by Garrick Hagen? So, yeah, I recognized none of those songs. Can't you hear me knocking? Dun, dun, dun. It's when the vulture at the beginning after he, like... It's the, oh, it he's says got like, the music in his That's ears. like eight years later, and it confused every MCU nerd ever. And then, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it jumps down, everything. That's, that's you know, crazy. God forbid you like pay attention to the other shit that's happening in the universe. But they seem to have adopted that strategy now. So that's great. Correct. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Tyler. I said Biggs. And Robert. No, I didn't have that. I said General Draper. Biggs is correct. Uh, so, Tyler, once again, one point lead, five to four. As we get into your final question in this round, it's in the category of Star Trek. In Star Trek Beyond, what is the name of the Vulcan mineral that the necklace Spock gave Uhura is made of? 
can't you hear me knocking? Dun, dun, dun. So anyway, it's like ground turkey. We season it, put a little Beautiful. garlic in. Uh, is this like a like a slow cooker situation? No, I usually like fry it in a pan, but you could oh. probably put it in a slow cooker. But nice. um, chop up some onions, throw some corn in, uh, sprinkle like breadcrumbs over all of it. Uh, and stuffing? Cooks, like like a uh, no, the breadcrumbs is like the stuffing. Um, and it cooks like a Four. cinnamon butternut squash. Eight. You mix it Two. in cranberries. One. Pens down. That all sounds phenomenal. Uh, let's go to Robert. Didn't have anything. And Tyler. This one where is volcanium? Ooh, very close, but incorrect. The answer is a uh, vocaya. Vocaya. Uh, vocaya. Vocaya. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, should, I should not be able to allow to read these answers. Uh, okay, guys, uh, we have a score of five to four at the end of round one. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. Okay, let's get into round number two. Nick, how's it going to work? Round number two. Did I read the rules for a regular match? Yeah. yeah. You're going to get four repeats in this here. Ten <laughs> matches. We get into round number two. Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have a wheel of ten fandom categories on it. Uh, no spinners or opponent's choice per request of the champion. Uh, each player will get a spin at the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep it. They spin the second time. You'll get five questions in the chosen category. Each are two points apiece, unless you like check down multiple choice. At which point, it'll only be worth one, but the on lookout is stealing is available in round number two. Tim, what's... Oh, never mind. I'll tell you what's on the wheel today. Okay. Uh, your categories on today's wheel are creature features. YA, Pixar, James Bond, Law & Order, Sci-Fi Icons, Horror Icons, Marvel, DC, and Criminal Underworld. Take it away, Tim. Okay, Tyler, you are in the lead. So would you like to spin first or defer? So I'd say defer where you have the one-point lead. Kind of let you yeah. take yeah. a minute. All right. Yeah, those, you did good, though. That was a tough round one, though. So, yeah, we'll defer. Thanks. Yeah, we'll go second. Okay, so I'll bring in Mr. Meltzer. This will be the spin for Mr. Kastner. Oh. Dun, dun. Law and order. Yeah. I'll, I'll I think probably. you should take that. I'll probably end yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll you got this, man. Thanks, buddy. All right. So, Nick, will you please go ahead and read Robert his questions in the category of law and order? Gladly, Robert, are you prepared for your questions in the category of law and order? C. Great. Your first question. Which law and order film features a swimming pool diving board rigged to explode when someone uses it? Lethal Weapon 2. That is correct for two points. Robert, your second question. Who plays Dr. Marie Lazarus in RoboCop 3? Four, three, um, multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are: Is it A. Joan Allen, B. Pam Lowell, C. Miriam Dabo, or D. Jill Hennessy? D. D is correct for one point. All right, Robert, your third question: In Die Hard, how did John kill Hans' first henchman? Multiple, please. All right, your multiple choice options are is it A shoots him, B stabs him, C throws him out a window, or D breaks his neck. I'll uh, repeat the options, please. All right, your options again are A shoots him, B stabs him, C throws him out a window, or D breaks his neck. I'll say throws him out a window. It is incorrect. Tyler Chance for the one point seal. Your options are A shoots him, B stabs him, C throws him out a window, or D breaks his neck. Breaks his neck? That is correct for the one point steal. 
All righty. Uh, Robert, your penultimate question in law and order. Dorn previously killed someone while working what job in Bad Boys for Life? Bouncer. That is correct for two points. <clears throat> All right, and Robert, your final question in law and order. In Beverly Hills Cop, after being thrown through a window, Axel is arrested for possession of a concealed weapon and what other charge? Disturbing the peace. That is correct for two more. Points. How am I disturbing the peace? I got thrown out of a fucking window. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Robert gets his total up to 11, but with the steal, I have Tyler at six. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. Okay, so we'll bring back the wheel in Miss Tapley. This will be the spin for Mr. Burke. Brought to you by Adobe. Yes. And it lands on sci-fi icons. How do you feel about this one? Mm -hmm. This is an iffy one. Five points. I mean. Yeah, you only need yeah, you need six for the lead. So you you can still afford doing a multiple in a couple. If there's something on there you're really worried about, but if there is, then I'd sell some space again if you want. But. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not too worried about, but like things I would avoid. Okay. Um, if you feel good enough, if you think you can get like even a seven or eight with this, I'd say just keep it. But I'll leave that. Yeah. I'll leave it on you. Yeah. Okay. Let's okay. keep it. Okay. Okay. All right, Tyler, I'll be giving you your questions in the category of sci fi icons. Are you ready? Let's do it. Your first question. <clears throat> Characters are held hostage at McKinnon Air Base in which sci-fi icons film? Five, four, three. Multiple. All right, your options are A, Rise of the Machines, B, Bumblebee, C, The Matrix Resurrections, or D, Ghostbusters Afterlife? B is in boy. That is correct for one point. I almost said Transformers Rise of the Machines. I was like, wait, that's not right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, that is correct for one point, Tyler. And your next question. Who plays the titular Predator in 1987's Predator? Kevin Peter Hall. That is correct for two points. Apparently a nice guy. <laughs> and your third question. What is the name of the Ghostbusters ghost fighting car in the Ghostbusters series? Ecto-1. That is correct for two points. That was a weird way to ask me. That scared me a little bit. <laughs> and a tie game, I believe. Yep. Your fourth question. In the Matrix... What does Cypher do that alerts the police programs to the fact that Morpheus and his teams are in the walls just before the agents take over? I'm going to go multiple again. All right, your options are A, sneezes, B, falls, C, kills a rat, or D, hits his head on a pipe. Kills a rat? That is incorrect. Robert, chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, sneezes, B, falls, C, kills a rat, or D, hits his head on a pipe? I was utterly convinced coughing was also going to be in this multiple choice, and when it wasn't, I was like, what the fuck? Uh, sneezes. <laughs> that is correct for one point. And Tyler, your final question in Sci-Fi Icons. What is the name of Dyson's son in T2 Judgment Day? Danny? That is correct for two points. I was like, I hope it's the same as Genesis. Uh, and the lead, uh, another, uh, Nick, just watch <laughs> that round. Just get rid of it. Get rid of it. Nick. Uh, it is uh, 13 to 12, one point lead for Tyler going into round number three. Nick, do you want me to read the rules? You got it? I'll try, Tim. Okay, go ahead. Round number three, we're going to ask you three questions. They're going to be worth points. That's it. 
Just kidding. Uh, three questions. One, two, and three points apiece. Uh, the questions will give two clues pointing to a particular fandom actor or actress. Uh, if you get the question correct, you will receive the concurrent point value. And then we'll go on to the next round. Yep. Okay. Uh, guys, ready for your one-pointer? Let's hit it. Sure. Nick, take it away. Your question is, who plays a Law & Order police officer and a Disney animated dragon? So after we did pictures tonight, yeah, we had a meeting at church then. But I had drank two beers, and I thought, is it okay for me to go to church after drinking two beers? No. Uh, to which my wife lovingly told me, who cares? And I said, it's probably true. <laughs> God, cares. <laughs> God cares, too. <laughs> One bends down. <laughs> He's bad at you. Uh, let's go to Robert. There's only two Disney animated dragons, so I went with Eddie Murphy. Uh, and Tyler. I went with the other one. No, I went with Eddie Murphy. Eddie, uh, Murphy. Eddie Murphy is correct. <laughs> uh, guys, your two-point question. Who plays a DC angel and an MCU sorcerer? Bless you, Timothy. But anyway, so then I then I, that was lunch, and then I wasn't really hungry because you know hung over a little bit. So I just had a bunch of blueberries, and then ate another double. That is often a, a snack in the Bracala household. We tend to have blueberries on yeah. on in stock all the time. Like, Very nice. Four, three. Even Ellie loves them too. One pens down. Let's go to Tyler. So Tilda Swinton and Robert. Tilda Swinton. That is correct for two points a piece. Tyler maintains his one point lead. Nick, what is the three point question? Your three point question. Who voices a Pixar non-human mother and a DreamWorks non-human mother? very tense yeah i agree i need like this, a muscle yeah this is the part where i start to feel like ooh. how's anna doing is she there no she uh went out with her Not friends there. her friends were visiting oh uh, i was invited but i again i wasn't feeling the best Five. so i was like we'll have Four. fun three Two. repeat please all right that is robert's first repeat question again who voices a pixar non-human mother and a dreamworks non-human mother I didn't write the repeats down. That's how I realized it was like, wait, I, I must not have said the right thing. God. Such an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. We still love you. Thanks. Appreciate we it. We love you despite your flaws. Who's we? Who are you talking about? Um, I don't, just <laughs> us. The people. Speaking for a lot of people. The people. Same. Five. If four, I not agree. Three. Two. One. Hands down. We are going to Robert first. I said Francis McDormand. And Tyler. I said Maya Rudolph. Both are incorrect. We are looking for Catherine O'Hara. Catherine oh, O'Hara. Oh, duh. yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, both missed that, but we still have a one-point game. Uh, Tyler's in the lead 16 to 15. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. Are you going to say fuck that round two and just wash that away? Yeah, we yeah, could. Fuck that round uh, three. Yeah, it's all so well, none of it matters. Uh, okay, uh, round number four. It's the deep cut round. Nick, can you? Yes, I got it. Round number four, deep cut round is going to work like this. We have eight. We have a new wheel with eight films on it, representing eight different fandom categories drafted by the players you see before you today. Five questions have been written in each film at a deep cut level. That means they're really hard. You should watch the movie. If you didn't, you might be a shit out of luck. Uh, but because they're so hard, we're going to make them worth two points apiece. Players will have 15 seconds to write down their answer and reveal it. If they're correct, they will receive two points. And then we'll move on to round number five. Make. 
We're going to spin it five times. It's going to be five questions. I, I might have missed that. But anyway. All right. Uh, what are these? Yeah, there the you movies go. On, on the Deep Cut Wheel today are Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, Casino Royale, Rogue Nation, Onward, Spider-Man No Way Home, Fantastic Beast, and where to find them, Godzilla X, Spawn, The New Empire, and Friday the 13th, 2009, 7 out of 8, ain't bad. All right, uh, let's spin that sucker. All right. <laughs> Friday the 13th, oh, nine. All right. Uh, I just, I, before we start, Jake, are you good back there? I see you're frozen in one spot and here in another. Got it. Okay. I just want to make sure you were good. I just realized all of a sudden. Okay. Uh, all right. Your question from Friday the 13th, 2009 is, what brand of beer does Richie bring to drink on the trip at the start of the film? God damn it. I got you. Yeah. I was writing questions for this, and Maggie looked over and said, what are you doing? And I said, I'm writing Shut questions. Up. And she said, why are there nipples on your screen? And I said... Because there's a lot in that movie. Because there's a lot in this it's movie. not to have them on the screen. <laughs> Five of At any point, two, two, very likely. One, hands down. Uh, let's go to Robert. I said Paps Blue Ribbon. Uh, let's go to uh, Tyler. I said Paps Blue American Ribbon. Yeah, we'll take either PBR, oh. Paps Blue Ribbon, oh. American Ribbon, the whole shebang. I uh, so I'm remembering the American part. Yeah. I've <laughs> had it written. I, you'll see the space. So right. He specifically says American, but yeah, it's PBR. Uh, okay, uh, so both get two points, and let's bring back that wheel. Nick, spin that again. Oh, <laughs> More Friday the 13th. Nick, go all for it. questions are this. Your question again. What state is on Trent's license plate? I got him. <laughs> are you happy that all five of your Friday the 13th 2009 questions are going to be used? I hope not. I, I, I enjoyed giving it a recent teams match. You didn't do shit. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we talked about that. I enjoyed my Puss in Boots uh, deep cut. I was kind of mad I, I didn't get to that. Yeah, it was time. very enjoyable. But... I would love to do that <laughs> again. Three, two, one. Pens down. So was Godzilla. Uh, let's go to Tyler. I said New Jersey. And Robert. I didn't know. I said Texas. New Jersey is correct. Wow. All right. Tyler hits that, uh, bringing his total up to 20. Uh, to 17. So we will bring back the wheel. This will be the next spin. <clears throat> okay, Rogue Nation. <laughs> Boring. And I believe this is the uh, one Rogue Nation question I wrote of the five. So that's interesting. Uh, okay. <laughs> Your question in the category of Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. The car bomb at the opera was what, according to Ethan? I only watched a little sliver of this movie. The opera part? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really like the other questions that we didn't read. From this movie? Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Five, four, three, two, one. And now let's go to Robert. I don't know. That's the second backup. Uh, let's go to Tyler. I said insurance. Insurance is correct. Uh, Tyler will hit that one for two. Let's bring back the wheel. What is next, Nick? Your penultimate question will come from the film. Got the little XCOM. All right, Nick, what's the question? That makes sense. X. Yeah, anything. Your question in Godzilla XCOM. XCOM. What is the code name for the mechanical arm device that Trapper attaches to Kong's arm? Any movie where one of the three main characters is named Trapper, I'm in. I'm I'm in. Honestly, I love it. Like, 
It's so I'm good. This movie, my child treasure. Movie fucking rocks, dude. What a 2024 for this actor, by the way. It, dude, no. those are fucking onions. Five, <laughs> four, three. I love that movie so much. One, <laughs> pens down. Uh, Nick has no idea what I'm talking about. Uh, let's go to Tyler. Project Powerhouse. And Robert. Project Powerhouse. That is correct for both. So, uh, Robert, up to 19 and uh 24 for tyler correct yeah. Yeah, yeah we missed it okay uh so one more question in this round nick go ahead and spin that wheel hooray onward all right your question in onward gentlemen how do the construction workers refer to Barley when asking someone to call the cops on him near the end of the film? I wrote this one, right? Yes, you did. I wrote the one. You are, I knew I wrote the other four, but I didn't quite recognize this I wrote one the one above before. this one last night. Oh. Got it. I was hoping it would be a five for five on Timmy. That's okay. I'm sorry we let you down. Nah, I should just write more questions is what I'm hearing. The wheel is still up. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, pens down. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, let's go to Robert. I said history buff. And Tyler. I also said history buff. Both are correct. So it is 21 to 20. Six, so a five point game as we get into round number five. Nick, how is it going to work? Round number five is going to work like this it is the betting round. We have five more questions. A fan of fights wants the players here to the category. They can bet anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they get the question correct, they will gain those points. If they get the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number five? Nope. Go, Tim. All right, the first category you can bet points on is Law and Order. All right, let's get bets starting with uh, Robert. I said two. Okay, and Tyler. I also said two. All right, your question in the category of Law and Order. What is Murtaugh doing when his family first comes in to wish him a happy birthday at the beginning of Lethal Weapon? Love this movie. It is good. I honestly love all four of them. Great. Like the fourth one, probably my least favorite, but I enjoy all four of them a lot. I liked them a lot more than I thought I would when we I watched them for this. I've seen four the most because it's always on TV. Mm. Like literally always on TV. It's yeah. like every two weeks. T TNT, I think, has a contract with that film. Five, four. I like wrote an article once that there should be a Logan type movie with Briggs and Murtaugh. Ooh, I mean, uh, let's go to Robert. Taking a bath. <laughs> and uh, Tyler. This fam thing's family do, taking a bath. Taking yeah. a bath is correct. <laughs> Still in a uh, five-point game. Your next category is coming to you from Nick. Nick category is the Wizarding World. Let's get bets, starting with Tyler. Two. And Robert. Two. Okay, Nick, what is the question? Your question is, Name one of the three Peveril brothers who are said to be the inspiration for the tale of the three brothers and the original holders of the Hollows in the Deathly Hollows Part 1. Thank you for reading that question. My pleasure. You know which word I would have struggled on? Yep. I, I inspire Ration? What did you say? Three, <laughs> five, to, to head. Four, three, to head. two, one. Pens down. Uh, let's go to Tyler first. On I think I'm wrong. I said Isaac. Uh, okay, and Robert. I said Ignotus. Ignotus is correct. We also would have accepted Cadmus and Antioch. Oh. Uh, so uh, that brings the score to a much closer 25 to 26 in favor of Tyler. Still a one point game. Your next category that you can bet points on is the MCU. 
Let's get bets starting with Robert. Two. And Tyler. Two. Okay, your question in the category of the MCU. Who plays Shang-Chi and Katie's female friend Sue, who they recount the events of the film to at the end of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? That's Ellie's favorite thing to do is she'll take a drink of water and then ah. how sweet. I probably did it once and then five, four, four, three. Repeat. All right, that is the second repeat for Robert. Who plays Shang Chi and Katie's female friend Sue, whom they recount the events of the film to at the end of Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Isn't that a whom? That might be a whom. I don't know. I just I'm just reading what you put down there. No, no, no. That's whom. That's a whom with an M. I've never known the difference. I don't know the difference between most words, frankly. I think it sounds the way you say it. I agree. Yeah. Five, four. I'll take another repeat. <clears throat> that is the third repeat for Robert. Who plays Shang-Chi and Katie's female friend, Sue, whom they recount the events of the film to at the end of Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings? Boom, really threw you off that time, huh? The whole thing. Every time I speak, I'm thrown off. Makes sense. Imagine, like... Never mind. <laughs> I won't imagine any. I was going to take a shot at me while taking a shot at someone else in the multiplex sphere. That it, it, no reason I needed to take a shot at them right now. So five, four, three, two, Smart. one. Pens down. Let's go to Robert Kastner. Tyler, congrats. I don't know. That's a Rachel Who. And Tyler. Stephanie Hasu. And your winner. And new Fandom Fights singles champion, uh, Stephanie, I want to say Shoe. 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 But yes. Uh, but spelled Tyler it. spelled it correctly, uh, had it correct. Uh, Nick, hell of a match. Really yeah. close. Um, it was neck and neck the entire time. Literally. Uh, we could have like thrown away was, most of it. We, yeah. Yeah. It looked, it looked like. I'm glad we didn't because it was gossip. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, there was that five point lead coming out of round four for Tyler. It looked like maybe he was good, but he missed that second question that brought it a lot closer. This just shows that not only does Tyler absolutely deserve to hold this singles belt once again, uh, becoming the second person to ever reclaim that belt, but Robert also very rightly deserved to get it and be here today. He played a great game, even in a loss. Um, I know he's going to beat himself up a couple over a couple of those misses, but I thought he played fantastic, and I thought Tyler played great as well. I thought they were pretty even today. Uh, it was yeah. a really good match. Uh, your thoughts before we get into the post? -match? No, I really thought it was a neck and neck match the whole time. I think Tyler got an edge in round four, which is interesting because Roberts usually like that's usually his bread and butter, and and Tyler I've seen struggle in round four before, so to see that flip today was very interesting. But Robert. Kept it cool, made a good comeback in, in round five, but ultimately it was just that MCU question that did him in. But like it, like you said, this was a great match back and forth. I never knew at any point who was actually going to win until you announced the winner. So both deserving champions. Tyler has been on a tear this entire year. Uh, absolutely deserving to be called the second ever two-time champion. Uh, and I could very well see Robert in that camp in the future as well, especially the way he's oh, playing. Yeah. So good shit all around. What a way to close it out. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go talk to the players right now in the post-match interviews. Robert Kastner, um, absolutely fantastic match. I think it's weird because sometimes when when people pick up vacant belts, there, there can be a stigma around it of like, oh, you didn't really earn it. You didn't have to get it. That just comes with the territory. Wrong side of the river had to deal with it. Joe had to deal with it. Brittany and Tyler had to deal with it at, at one point in time. And I don't think you necessarily have to defend in your next match to prove that you deserved it in the first place. 
I think you have to put up a damn good fight and show that you can win in a title match against the best of the best, which to your credit, that is what you called for. Uh, I think that's what Tyler gave you today. And I think you pushed him far enough to where I don't think anyone can really claim that you didn't deserve to hold the belt in the first place because you are an absolutely deserving champion. You showed it here today. You played lights out uh, and you definitely gave Tyler a run for his money after Tyler. You've been on more of a rest, whereas Tyler has been playing two people at a time and playing Rue and playing Joe. So he had that momentum behind him. He was really kind of an unstoppable force today. Uh, but at the end of the day, Robert, I think this was a great year for you overall. You're starting with your showing in the last one standing, uh, making it all the way to winning the belt and to having a fantastic uh, match defense here, even if it didn't go your way. But ultimately, how would you cap off uh, this year for yourself. Yeah, I'm not going to deny the year was good. Um, this last few weeks um, have been a challenge um, as a person, as a parent, and as a competitor. And honestly, um, when I came into tonight, I said, win or lose, I just kind of want to get through this part because the deep cutting has been kind of a struggle lately it's been late nights early mornings sleeping little and i think it's impacted my sort of mental capacity not saying that i don't want to do it and it's not worth it um but it did take a toll on me this time and i think that showed up i didn't re-watch rogue nation i had notes for it and that got me and then uh i have i think i have um I think I have the license plate written down, but I don't think I had the state written down, which was hilarious. <laughs> um, I didn't think about that. I should have thought about that after we got, you know, the Friday the 13th part three bumper sticker question or whatever. But, um, and then the last question, I figured it was somebody of repute, but I couldn't narrow down and I didn't really kind of put down who I necessarily want to see i should have thought about that a little bit more and we could have kept going um i was proud of getting it that far after kind of pooching deep cuts as i did a little bit um but i'm happy overall with how the match went yeah i think it proves i can hang in these and that's cool um and i have the belt once and i could win it again i think so i'm not I'm not struggling with how this went. I'm fairly happy with it. Obviously, I wanted to win, but Tyler was just better than me today. It happens. Yeah. Jake, uh, we haven't seen you manage Robert I I in a little bit here. But from what I recall, when you used to manage Robert, he used to say a lot worse things about himself than that. So, <laughs> and normally your job is to be like, shut up, Robert. You don't know what you're talking about. Like, you're the best. <laughs> but I don't think you have to do that today. Instead, um, how do you think Robert did in the in this title match? And, and since he's accomplished so much since we last saw you at his side, uh, how do you think he's done in all that time? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think for for how competitive Robert is in other divisions outside of the geek sphere, for him to be at this level here is just goes to show you why he was multiplex player of the year last year. Like just for him to be able to still be at this level, despite all of the struggles outside of the trivia sphere is extraordinary. And it's not to take away anything from Tyler, but Tyler pretty much concentrates just on geek and that and fandom. And that is what he does. And obviously, I think some of that was apparent in this match that, like, he just had that little extra focus that all the best, all the best players in the history of this division have. And I think that Robert, for him to be able to get to this point um, and still be at this level against, I think, against, I think. I think Tyler, for a long time, people kind of saw him as the tier below Joe and Brittany, but like in that next tier, at the top of that next tier. I think he's in that tier now, and I think it's like not even a question. I think he is easily one of the elite players in this game, and for Robert to be this close with him despite missing two deep cuts, I think speaks to his level. 
And I think, uh, yeah, I'm so proud of how he played today. It broke my heart a little bit that a very there was a very rare time where I knew an MCU question that he didn't. Um, and that kind of breaks my heart a little bit. Uh, but I think, I mean, that Wizarding World poll was fantastic. Like that's a, those are weird names. So to remember that I think is really fantastic. And I think I not even think, I know Robert will be back when his life settles down a little bit, though, I guess being a parent of a very young child, it's kind of hard to do that. But I think he, I think I'm pretty confident he will be back in this, in this position. Uh, and I hope it's against Tyler because Tyler is a very deserving champion. I think he's good enough to hold on to this thing for a while. Mm. Um, so I want yeah. I want the trilogy. Robert, you look like you had one more thing to add. Yeah, I was just going to say um, there's going to be weeks and times when my daughter is not fighting like four different illnesses at the same time. And that uh, I will be a little bit more sharper in the mind. So I think. <laughs> Just watch out. Things Robert, you, you've given this league more than enough. If you wanted to hang it up right now, we would be like, thank you. You have you've you have served us more than we ever could have asked. But I'm glad to hear that, that you won't be because uh, I look forward to see what you can do in the future as well. So Robert, congratulations on one having the title and putting up a great match defending it today. And we will see you in the new. Tyler Birch, uh, the second ever two-time singles champion. Uh, sitting next to the first ever two-time singles champion, currently the team's champions. Um, you guys are kind of uh, making a bit of a name. You guys are gross. <laughs> so, uh, but Tyler, I love you, but you're gross. <laughs> Tyler, uh, insane match today. I knew it was going to be close. I have been seeing the way you've been playing, and if I was to like put money on this beforehand, I'd be like, I think Tyler's just got the momentum. Um, and he is, like Jake said, playing at the levels that Brittany, Joe, myself, um, Tim, that we all like were at at one point. Uh, and I think you are in that uh, right now as well. So I, I was very nervous, but I also know how big of a workhorse Robert is and how much he loves putting into this, even when he's got so much other shit going on. Um, and it was as close as I thought it would be. And there were even times I was like, if Tyler misses this Wizarding World question and Robert hits it, this could 100% flip the match. Uh, it wound up not doing that. You wound up keeping your head in. Robert, um, a seasoned champion at this point, you yourself are also a seasoned champion. You know what to do in those types of moments. And at the end of the day, you put it away. You have gotten a weird type of revenge, even though the person who did it to you is next to you, but you, you like undid what was done to you last year. Yeah. Um, and at the end of the day, you have accomplished something that only one other person has accomplished and i look forward to seeing you next year because uh without Brittany in the league at all i think it is going i think it very well could be the tyler show so let's see how that happens but first and foremost how are you feeling uh in the aftermath of your second singles championship uh does it just for clarification does this air before or after the teams Tim, probably after, after, after for sure. Yes, after. Okay, after. Okay, okay. Um, no, I mean, uh, I obviously I feel great. It feels so good to have worked so hard this year uh, and see it be rewarded not only in things that you know last year I could only dream about you know things like beating Joe and uh, I mean beating teams. Not that I really dreamed about that because I didn't think it would be a thing that happened. But uh, you know, getting to getting to this point like. Uh, it just, it feels so bizarre because a year ago I lost both the belts and, you know, on the same weekend. And so I went out of the season without anything. So now I'm a year later leaving this season with everything. Uh, so it feels really good. Um, this, this match was really intense. Um, I, I mean, obviously with it being one point, pretty much every single round, uh, there wasn't really any leeway for me to miss anything. I got a little bit of room in that, de that deep cut one, um, which, Man, that Friday the 13th one, I just used context clues for the license plate because I, I did not have, yeah. I didn't have the state yeah, down. I, I was didn't. like, movie takes place in New Jersey. Let's hope that they didn't go very far from home. Uh, 
but so pulling those two uh, deep cuts to give me that breathing room. Um, and then, yeah, just getting into uh, and getting into like round five and doing like a long order and then uh, Wizarding World, which I mean, I know Wizarding World didn't go our way, but I think 10 out of 10, we're always going to be trying to go for anything that we feel strong in. And it doesn't matter how deep it is. If it falls one way, it could easily be something I'm just like, oh, yeah, of course. The other way it could be, oh, my God, like who even thinks about that, which Robert did, and that was an incredible pool. So shout out yeah, to Robert oh, for yeah. that. But <laughs> and then, uh, you know, with uh, Stephanie, his, uh, Stephanie Shu, um, like I've seen her in uh, like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and you know everything everywhere all at once. In the and, Bagel movie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's somebody that like I, I, I really, I've always really liked. So that kind of made it easier because I know that like she's barely in that movie. So how deep of a pool that would be if you don't pay attention yeah. to all the other things she does. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm just glad that we won. I'm glad it was a, a great match. Uh, Robert, I know um, he likes to beat himself up, but he really proved a lot today uh, for trying to, to keep that belt. Um, I feel like he put up a better fight against me than I did against Brittany last year. So uh, I think that he he's he's had a great year. Uh, I'm really excited for him for you know next year. Um, but I'm just really excited that I got here in the end, honestly. I mean, I went through a tournament. I won a tournament. Um, I guess now I can reveal I never really hated you and Tim. Uh, I know this is a big reveal. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but it was a lot of fun, like, getting to play those bits. It was a lot of fun getting to play with Brittany. A lot of fun uh, getting to do what, what was an incredible experience, something I really, really mm -hmm. enjoyed. Um, so it's been a phenomenal season. I love what I got to do with it. I'm loving the, how I'm ending it. I'm excited. My next big step is going to be defending the belt because I didn't get to do that last time. So this, that's the next goal. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm going to tell you who you may be defending against in just a minute. First, Brittany, um, I want to change something I said a second ago, and I mean no disrespect to you, but I said now with Brittany out of the league, you could, you could be the Tyler show. I think even if Brittany was still in the league, it could theoretically be the Tyler show going next year based on the way you're playing. Brittany, would you agree? And what advice? You were literally in the exact same spot as Tyler last year, uh, who then had to go forward and defend uh, in, into the new yeah. year, captains, everything like that. How do you think Tyler will fare in that sort of environment? Yeah, um, I agree with that sentiment. Actually, just full disclosure, I didn't know the data, that data question. I should have known it when I looked up who she was. But yeah, so Tyler, there's one right there that I didn't know that you knew. So I absolutely think um, it could go either way now between the two of us. And that would be really interesting if I was still playing in the league. Um, but, uh, or in single story, of course, as you guys know, we're, we're still team. Um, but uh no, uh, I think my advice for you next year is just remember, use your downtime because you're going to be playing a lot next year. You've been putting in all the work. So just really enjoy, like right now, I know you got some new moves, but take some time off, enjoy life, and just, yeah, enjoy it. And yeah, because you're going to have, you're going to be busy next year for a while. So, yeah. Speaking oh, of um, next year, Tyler. Sorry, one quick yeah. thing. I just, because uh, you, you started talking to Brittany, it triggered my memory. She, she was the one that predicted that this would be my year. And so oh, yeah. at the end of uh, last time, she said, I think next year could very well be like Tyler's year. So shout out to you for your, your fortune telling abilities and I appreciate always having the faith in me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but speaking of next year, uh, Tyler, because Tim and I do hate you, originally you had a number one contender match that you rightfully earned. We pushed it off again because we hate you and we mm. said you have it again at the beginning of the next next year we are now taking that away you do not get that anymore because you are now the champion so we're not gonna have you play in a contender match to play yourself uh, wow. but someone who also earned that contender match is hobby mad so who you were originally gonna play in the contender match you may be playing in the title match he will have to play one of four people it will either be Ryan Payne, Jacoby Bancroft, Cameron Holtzman, or Amaru Moses. Basically, all the singles people from Goat, minus Scully, who has retired, and Joe, who was the last person Javi had played, uh, and the last person you had played uh, before today. So those four, one of them will play Javi. Winner of that gets you. Do you think it will be Javi, or do you think one of those four? Who do you want? Uh... I mean, I think it'd be, I think it'd be a lot of fun for it to be Javi. Uh, we're good friends. Um, it'd also be kind of like funny, poetic, because I believe in the tournament. I 
upset Robert, and then I went to go play hobby after that. So it'd be kind of funny coincidence if that happened. Uh, so I think it would be great to be hobby. I know that um, he's he was rooting for me in this just so that way he could put it off our little our little showdown. So uh, yeah. I'd be it'd be really fun if it was him again. Uh, I mean, and then those other ones. I mean, I've only played out of those four. I believe I've only played in singles room. So. Um, any of those ones are brand new people, which I always enjoy getting to play against new people. Mm -hmm. um, and then getting a chance to play against Rue again would be a lot of fun. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, I think uh, I think Javi, Javi has it, but uh, any you never know what's going to happen, especially with new movies coming in. So I think anybody could be facing me in that first defense. True that. Mortal Kombat! All right, Tyler, congratulations uh, on being the second two-time singles champion and teams champion, finishing out the year hell strong in a great uh, singles title match as well. We will see you uh, in your first defense of 2025. I'm mad at you. Because I said the word hella? No, because I was going to come out and say, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> it's because I'm mad at myself because I said the word hella. Because I oh, care. that's well, then yes, I'm mad at you because of that. I am a Gen Z. Uh, hey, great match! Congrats to Robert, uh, and congrats to Tyler for winning that belt. Thank you to Brittany and Jake. Thank you, to Nick, for writing. But most of all, thank you. This is the last match of the season. Thank you for watching. It has been an extraordinary. 2024 season of fandom fights we got big stuff coming in 2025 new movies uh lots of fun stuff it's gonna be super super fun uh Tim, Tim, you know what's funnier than 24 25 <laughs> yeah we'll see you next time bye Welcome back to the world of Movie Melee. I am your host, Caleb Poho, and tonight we have the team's titles on the line at the final act. It's going to be a good one, a trilogy capper. No better way to end the team's division than have the rivalry come down to the three-peat for the title. A growing rivalry between Back to Formula, who just won the belts, uh, coming off of a great game with Blaine Canada, Sexual Chocolate, winning turmoil in epic fashion. Uh, these two teams getting to face off for the third time. Going to be a good one. Joining me on the desk tonight is Canada's most beautiful man, Dylan Bantline. How are you doing, Dylan? Well, thank you very much. I'm doing very well. Yeah, this is, I think, a very exciting one. Uh, yeah, as you said, this is the trilogy matchup. Uh, both teams one and one against each other, and the, but this is the first time they're facing uh, off against each other in a five-round format. So I think that'll be very interesting. Uh, so that yeah, that's a very interesting storyline there. And yeah, just in general, I'm very happy to see these two teams be the ones that are facing each other for the title. It makes me very happy just because I love both teams a lot. I think they're both very fun. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Sexual Chocolate, they made their way here. Uh, you want to talk about like making a statement going into a title match? Uh, their performance in the tag team turmoil, which is what got them here today. Uh, they not only lasted the most rounds, uh, which by the way, not even like just like barely skating by from round to round. They were like, consistently scoring like that like the top from round to round until they got eliminated and then they went up against titans in the wild stallions uh who i think many would have expected to get the win there just because of their pedigree and they're like one of the best teams of all time and they got the win uh do you want to talk about making a statement like that's a pretty phenomenal uh thing to do and uh yeah back to formula coming off also like just uh, 
it can't be said enough how great that their last match was against Flame Canada. Like that's I think one of the best title matches we've ever seen. Uh, so the great stuff there. I know they're on a hot streak. Even before that, they got the wins against the former champions Kumite. So yeah, I think this is uh, going to be an awesome match, and I'm really excited for it. Absolutely. So we'll go ahead. We'll talk to our teams right now, starting with Sexual Chocolate, Ryan and Rue. You guys, epic win at Turmoil, bringing you here tonight. Uh, obviously, the attempt to play for the title is going to be really exciting, especially for Rue, another division with a title match on your belt, not just in one year. Overall, I think that puts you one away from the cycle. How are you feeling about playing the match tonight? Um, I am very excited, very happy to do this. I've been sick all week. I've been pissed off all week, so I'm kind of ready to fucking go. Mr. Payne. Oh, uh, sorry. No, I was just waiting for you to let you have your moment. But, yeah, this is going to be exciting. At last, I mean, Rue's been doing fuck. He's been killing it. My year has been kind of up and down, and I think the last time I was in a championship match, oh, it was more of those situations where I had the I had the lead. I just had a problem make closing it. So hope. So I am definitely hoping for a different outcome here. And I mean, Mark and Jake, I can't think of two better opponents for Rue and I to go up against for our first t- title match. A team that not only I mean, I was, more of a playful rivalry to be honest, but it won't underscore it's not going to underscore how intense this is going to be and i am jazzed up for this a little pissed myself but i'm jazzed up sexual chocolate sexual chocolate love it we'll bring in your opponents tonight the current movie melee team's champions uh in jake marangoni and mark manchaka back to formula you guys pulled off an incredible win to get this title against blame canada you are here again now with a chance to secure a defense here at the final act, how are you guys feeling? Do you have the pressure to you? How are you feeling? Uh, winning the belt, winning the title is one thing. Uh, defending it is a whole a whole other tale. It's uh, it's very difficult. Um, I'm very happy that we're in this this position. It's great. Mark and I are chance, and it's uh, it's nice. But that being said, we do now have to play teams uh, in this uh, pressure-inducing scenario. So that's wonderful. But hey. We're also playing a team that we've played before and a team that, yeah, playful rivalry, I think it's fair, although I want to crush your bones to dust in this match. But regardless of that, um, yeah, I haven't, I, the, full disclaimer, we're recording this before Turmoil's been released, so I haven't had the chance to see how well they've done. But from what I've heard, uh, it was uh, pretty crazy. Um, and I had Cody and Mark sort of give me uh, sort of a, keep me up to date with what's going on. And when I found out it was between Social Chocolate and Stallions, I was like, well, shit. And then when I was found out who the, the winner of that, I went, well, shit. That's <laughs> a completely different uh, reason for saying that. Um, but it's awesome. I love that we get to, you know, all of the trilogies and the rematches we've had. I, I'm happy that this is the rubber match, the trilogy of the side in five rounds, no less. Like, how great is that? So That's what you're good right. luck, Amaru, Ryan. Bring it on. Let's fucking go. Mark, you have anything you want to add? Or are you going to let, let leave it there? I say real quick, as, as an admin, I'm really glad this is the trilogy capper. Uh, just going to make it just really fun to watch, really fun to participate in. Yeah, um, you know, at last match, I did something I'd never done before, which is win a belt. And now I want to do another thing I'd never done before, which is defend it. Love it. All right, guys, then we'll get right into it in round number one, which works like this. This is the standard whiteboard round. You are each going to be writing answers for your teams on your whiteboard, working individually through eight questions from eight different uh, eight different categories within the realm of general movies. Should you get all eight questions correct, you'll be issued a bonus question. Since it is a title match, you have four repeats for the entirety of the match and a challenge rule. Any questions as we get into round number one? No. All right, guys, then your first question will come in the category of horror. What 90s horror film is about a Vietnam War veteran who attempts to uncover his past while suffering from a severe case of dissociation? It's a good read. Thank you. Yeah. I, there's a lot of like, I always have a lot of pressure on myself every time I'm like hosting a, like a title match. I want to get the first question good. Yes. And if I like stumble it, I'm like, oh man. Got to start off on a good note. Yeah. <laughs> Two, one, pens down. Uh, we will start with Rue. No blank boards. Texas Chainsaw Mask. Uh, we'll go to Mark. 
I think it was a reporter, but I said Jacob's Ladder. Uh, we'll go to Ryan. I also wrote Jacob's Ladder. And Jake? It's a metaphorical ladder, but it's still Jacob's Ladder. Jacob's Ladder is correct. Formula typically 2-1 going to the second question from Dylan. In the category of romance, what subject is Jenny studying at Radcliffe College in Love Story? And we'll take a general answer. I started at How I Met Your Mother rewatch, and oh, yeah. when that part came up again, I don't know why we don't do that. Again. We do it I've, I've never seen a single episode of How I Met Your Mother. Really? I'm sorry. Oh, no. Do you just think I do general answer because it's a fun thing? Or? Yeah, I'm, I'll be honest. I thought that was something that this <laughs> this league started. <laughs> Four, nope. Three, two, one. Hands down. We're gonna go to Mark first. English. Uh, we're gonna go to Ryan. I have philosophy, but I changed it to political science. I uh, will go to Jake. I said maths. I will go to Rue. English. Uh, all incorrect. We're looking for music. Music. Ah. So with that, there are no perfect rounds. As we go to your third question in the category of Oscars. What is the only Oscar that women talking won? It's not something that's going to happen a lot on this desk tonight at least if you could pitch uh the one category from the teen choice awards to bring over to the oscars which would it be is best kiss one i feel like that would just be really fun because then the oscars are like having to parse through something that they just don't like like force them to i don't know i feel like that'd be fun five four three two one Hands down. Uh, we will go to Ryan first. I said adapted screenplay. I uh, will go to Jake. Best adapted screenplay. We'll go to Rue. Best adapted screenplay. And we'll go to Mark. The other one. Best adapted screenplay is correct. So Formula and Chocolate now all tied up three to three as you get to your fourth question from Dylan. Uh, in the category of action slash adventure, in Commando, what is the full name of the character played by Arnold Schwarzenegger? It's been pointed out to me, by the way, that I was thinking of the MTV Movie Awards. Uh, thank you. Getting My caught bad. up by Payson Johnson. Sorry. Did I say Kids' Choice Awards or Teen Choice Awards? Now I'm very I thought confused. you said Teen, but... Um, yeah. Now I'm second-guessing myself. Because Payson says Kids. So. I think mm. it was the People's Choice Awards. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Action star. Give it to Robert Downey Jr. Like I'm, kidding, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. We will start with Jake. Incredible name. John Matrix. We'll go to Rue. Matrix. Said Gimble. Uh, we'll go to Mark. Yeah, I'll time it. John Matrix. And Ryan. Uh, yes, John Matrix. John Matrix is correct. Five, four, back to formula as we get to your fifth question in the category of comedy. Who plays the evil Brewmeister Smith in Strange Brew? I really need to see this. I was going to ask you if this is just like the, like, the movie <laughs> to, to you, but I guess that answers my question. I almost watched it for a round table, but uh, then the person who brought it there had to drop out last minute, and then we just dropped the movie from the episode. Uh, so you got to say that uh, sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We are back to room. Christopher Walken. Uh, we go to Mark. Terrible against some Charles Dance. But... Uh, we'll go to Ryan. I don't know. I just said John Candy. Uh, and we will go to Jake. Is it Max von Sydow? Max von Sydow is correct. So that ah, formula extends the lead six to four. Going into your next question from Dylan. I knew that. I knew that. In the category of classics, in what classic film does the main character win a bet that he can eat 50 hard-boiled eggs in an hour? That is a shit ton of cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you go that to
<laughs> Next thing we know, that's that's actually fun fact. That's probably about how the movie ends. <laughs> Split. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. Uh, we will go to Mark first. Cool hand, Luke. Uh, we'll go to Ryan. No, I got nothing. Uh, we'll go to Jake. Cool hand, Luke. And Ru. No, I'm incorrect. Cool hand, Luke is correct. Back to formula extends long. that lead again, eight to four. As we get to your pent ultimate question in the category of actors and actresses, what real life person has been portrayed by Morgan Freeman in 2009 and Idris Elba in 2013? Two very good actors. Yeah. 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 I, I mean Morgan Freeman. <laughs> like yeah. no no shade to Idris Elba, but like yeah. yeah. It was a bad question. I think it's Idris bad. Elba would even say Morgan Freeman. Four, three, two, <laughs> two, one. And Morgan Freeman would say Morgan Freeman. Um <laughs> this down, we'll go to Ryan. I honestly need someone like this. Nelson Mandela. Uh we'll go to Jake. Funny, because I thought he died in prison. Nelson Mandela. Uh, we will go to Rue. This one's for Mandela. <laughs> uh, and Mark. Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, clean sweep, 10 to 6, going into your final question of the round from Dylan, because there are no perfect rounds. In scores and soundtracks, the song Sweet Dreams Are Made of This plays over the opening credits of what recent release? It's a good song. It's a good song. Are your dreams sweet? No. No, I don't know. It's not a good time. No. You have insomnia? Uh, I did last year. It randomly like, just kicked in out of nowhere, and I'm like, why can't sucks, I right? not sleep? <laughs> it comes out of nowhere. You're like, I'm, trying, I'm tired. And all of a sudden, you're like, I can't sleep. Or sleep. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, and we'll go to Jake. Thought this movie was great. Kinds of kindness. Uh, we'll go to Rue. Thought this movie was ass. Kinds of kindness. <laughs> we'll go to Mark. Then Maxine. And we'll go to Ryan. Well, being a recluse definitely hurt me here. I just said the substance. <laughs> uh, kinds of kindness is, in fact, correct. So, uh, back to formula leads at the end of round number one with 11. Sexual chocolate has seven. Anything that can happen is we get in round number two, which is the wheel round, and it works like this. We're each going to get a chance to spin from a lovely wheel from wheeldecide.com. If you like the category you land on, you're going to get five questions worth two points apiece. You can opt to multiple choice, but it devalues it down to being only worth one point. You can spin again if you don't like what you land on the first time. However, you are stuck with whatever you land on on the second time, and there is stealing in the round. Your categories on the wheel tonight are 21st century French language horror, 2000s black cinema, comic book movies, directors, action adventure, Jason Statham, fandom American spies, Oscars comedy, and sci-fi fantasy. Back to formula, you are in the league. Would you like to go first or defer to sexual chocolate? Well, we are going to defer, correct? That's right. Yeah. All right, so this will be the first spin for sexual chocolate. We've landed on the category of Phantom American Spies. Would you like to keep it or spin again? We're going to keep it. Keep it. Okay. All right, then I'll go ahead and put the wheel in the back. And uh, Dylan, go ahead and give them their questions in the category of Phantom American Spies. Sure. And uh, just for the rec uh, for steals, if there are any, uh, back to formula, who's going to be answering? Jake, okay. Or are you pointing at Mark? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> okay. Cool. All right. Then your first question, guys. <laughs> in Patriot Games, Sean Miller causes Kathy to get into a car accident, which injures Sally. What body part does Sally have to get removed due to the accent? Accident. Sorry. Her spleen. Violent. That is correct for two points. So your next question. Which section of the Book of Job does Max reference as the numbered operation when attempting to buy the knock list in Mission Impossible? Uh, 
Multiple choice. Your options are A, 121, B, 314, C, 5, 6, or D, 9, 10. B as in boy. That is correct for one point. And your third question now. In The Born Legacy, what are the two colors of pills that Operation Outcome agents were consistently taking? Blue and blue and green, finally. That is correct for two points. So now your penultimate question in this category. What is the first name of the White Widow in Mission Impossible Fallout? Uh, Alana, final answer. That is correct for two more points. And now your final question in this category. In the Born Identity, the laser projector that the fishermen remove from uh, Born's hip at the beginning of the movie projects a series of numbers that are what? A bank account number. Final answer. Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, back to formula for the two point steal. Uh, bank account numbers, final answer. Uh, that is also incorrect. Uh, I'm a little confused myself. The answer we have here is safe deposit box. Is there a... We're going to challenge that. Okay. We'll be right back after the challenge. Yeah. All right, uh, back from the challenge. We looked into it. Uh, sexual chocolate is correct, so they'll be awarded the points, and they will keep their challenge score coming out of their spin. Is sexual chocolate with 16, back to formula with 11. But I think it happens we bring up the wheel for back to formula spin. We land on the category of Oscars. Would you like to keep it or spin again? All right, we're going to take it. All right. We'll put the wheel away, and I'll go ahead and give you your first question in the category of Oscars, which is, what is the only Best Picture winner released in the 1960s to not win Best Director? In the Heat of the Night, final answer. That is correct for two points. Your second question. What was the first song that Diane Warren received an Oscar nomination for? I don't want to miss a thing. Final answer. That is incorrect. Sexual chocolate chance for the two points, steal. Five, four, three, two. I guess it. 
Take my breath away, finally. Uh, both of Greg looking for nothing's going to stop us now. Um, so uh, we will move on to your third question. Who is the first person to win a second Oscar for best director? Two. Repeat the question. For sure. Uh, your question again. Who is the first person to win an Oscar? Oh, sorry. Let me start again. Who is the first person to win a second Oscar for Best Director? And we are clarifying it does not have to be back to back. Multiple choice. Your multiple choice options are A, Frank Borzaghi, B, Frank Lloyd, C, Lewis Milestone, or D, Frank Capra. Frank Capra, final answer. That is incorrect. Sexual chocolate, the chance of the one point steal. Your options are A, Frank Borzaghi, B, Frank Lloyd, C, Lewis Milestone, or D, Frank Capra. Four. B as in boy, violent. Uh, that is also incorrect. Looking for C, Lewis Milestone. Uh, so we'll move on to your tenth ultimate question. Who has lost acting Oscars to Robert De Niro, Jack Nicholson, and J.K. Simmons? Robert Duvall, final answer. That is correct for two points. And your final question in the category of the Oscars is, besides Birdman, what other film won four Oscars for films released in 2014? The Grand Budapest Hotel, final answer. That is correct for two more points. So at the end of that round, back to formula leads 17, sexual chocolate at 16. Anything can happen is we get to round number three, which is the deep cuts round. It works like this. You have each picked two movies. You are now going to be able to work together to answer a question from each movie. Each question worth two points. Uh, at the end of this round, we'll move on to the next. We'll see who has the most points. So uh, your first question comes to you from the movie Casino. Casino. According to Ace's narration, who is watching the floor map? Good picture. Yeah. Five, four, three, two, one. And down, uh, we will start with sexual chocolate. The pit boss. And we will go to uh, back to formula. Pit bosses. Uh, pit bosses is correct. Uh, don't know if we can accept pit boss singular because what we have here in the doc, so I'm going to say we're just taking plural. If you want to challenge, I'm going to we're going to we're going to challenge that. You said who pit boss is correct. We'll be right back with the challenge. Back from the challenge, uh, sexual chocolate will win. We decided that the uh, question leans to a singular now, not a plural now, so therefore both answers will be accepted. Score is 19 to 18 for back to formula as we get to your second deep cut. Dylan, what movie is that? In Coming to America, that's coming to America, not with the two, just with the, the, the word two. Anyways, there's no other movie. There's no other movie. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Your question Who does Akeem quote while talking to Lisa in McDowell's right before the place is nearly robbed? 
and we can accept just the last name. But if you want to give us the first name, that's fine too. But <laughs> Drew makes a great point. There is no uh, sequel. This is a perfect film. So it's quite good. Yeah, good. I liked it quite a bit. Yeah. Go five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Uh, we'll start with back to formula this time. Nietzsche. Uh, and we'll go to sexual chocolate. And he'll end any motherfucker with his name in a spelling bee. <laughs> Nietzsche. <laughs> Nietzsche is correct. Uh, 21 to 20 as it gets to your next deep cut in the film Tenet. As a cover story on what date does the protagonist tell Kat to say they met during the... I'm going to start that over. That whole thing just sent me down a, a rabbit hole. I'm going to start that over. I apologize. As a cover story, on what date does the protagonist tell Kat to say that they met during the party in Riyadh? Uh, we only need the month and the day. You realize they just both wrote down the answer before I, you... I understand. I understand that both... Before you even started this, the second time? <laughs> for my own sanity, I need to make sure that I, I stated that, yeah. whatever that was correct. <laughs> that question emulates the movie to a T. I was confused <laughs> beginning to end. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, we'll go to sexual chocolate. June 29th. And we will go to Back to Formula. June 28th. June 29th is correct. Uh, so uh, with that, sexual chocolate swings in the lead 22 to 21 as we'll go to your oh, final. Hold on. From hold on. Sorry. Pause, pause, pause. Pausing. All right, yeah, we're going to challenge. I'm pretty sure it's 20. Okay, we'll be right back with the challenge. We're back. We checked the scene. June 29th is the answer, so back to formula. We'll lose their challenge. Score is 22-21 sexual chocolates. Lead as we get to the final deep cut from Dylan. In, <clears throat> sorry, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, when Peter is explaining the plan for infiltrating Alchemax, step six is to do what and run. And uh, says we're looking for a specific answer. This is so intense. My dog is running around the room. She can sense it. One, hands down. Uh, we will start with uh, back to formula. Take a bagel from the cafeteria. And sexual chocolate. Grab a bagel. Grab a bagel, take a bagel. Either variation we will accept. Uh, so with that, at the end of round number three, I have sexual chocolate lead 24 to back to formula 23. All right, we're moving on to round number four, which is the risk round. It works like this. You guys are going to get a category. You as a team will tell us if you want to pass or play. If you pa if you play, you will gain a point, or if you miss the question, lose a point. If you pass, no harm, no foul. You can only opt out of playing twice in the round. Your first God. question in the risk round will be in scores and soundtracks. Okay, uh, Central Chocolate, uh, raise your hand if you're taking it. That way you don't have to mute. Okay, uh, and are you passing or play? Okay, uh, and back to formula, passing or play? I am taking it, yes. Absolutely. Okay, awesome. Uh, then your first question, go ahead, Bill. All right, so your first question, uh, your question in scores and soundtracks. Who composed the score for The Departed? God, what a terrible movie. 
I don't even have StreamYard access, so I can't see the reaction to the person who I wanted to see. I, 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 said I that, just so. didn't believe you. So. Yeah. I wasn't very convincing when I said it. No, you've given yeah. better performances than that. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Uh, we will start with Rue. Hey, Jerry Goldsmith. I don't know. Uh, and we will go to Jake. How sure? Howard Shore is correct. As we'll go to your next category, which now Ryan and Mark will have to take, is the category of musicals. All right. Uh, we will start with uh, Mark on this one. Uh, are you going to uh, answer or opt out? Fuck no. Fair enough. Uh, Ryan, are you going to answer or opt out? Opting out. Awesome. This is one of our only stats only questions. <laughs> uh, your question in musicals. Uh, what comedian plays the titular character in The Wiz? So because this question doesn't matter, what if we just gave them the I, answer to boost the stats? You know, technically, maybe. I don't know how I feel about that. No. <laughs> I feel like it's a bad idea. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Hands down. Uh, back to formula. What do you got? Uh, so Richard Pryor. Uh, and sexual chocolate. I felt like this was from our identification. Richard Pryor. Richard Pryor is correct. Uh, so with that sexual chocolate, you have to answer the remainder of these. You can change who takes this question uh, as we get to your third category. What are you doing? In the category of the 1990s. All right, uh, we'll start with sexual chocolate. Uh, who's answering it, and are you answering? They will I'll be, be answering it. Okay. Okay. Uh, and back to forward. Oh, it doesn't matter. We've used passed twice. Oh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, all right. Awesome. Don't go ahead and give them the question. All right. In uh, the 1990s, what sport does Mitch Kramer play in Dazed and Confused? It's very intense. It is. Yes. Sorry, I'm all over the place too. Uh, did, did Mark opt in or opt out on that question? Uh, no. I think he passed. Yeah. It was like, again, I had to think for a second. Take it right now. I think you might. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down. Also, gotta love Mark's little like nine, nine, nine. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Mark for stats. I should say I did since y'all forgot, but. <laughs> Uh, and we will go. You would have been uh, caught in the edit. <laughs> uh, we'll go right. All right, football. Uh, incorrect. We're looking for baseball. Baseball. Uh, so your next category that Jake and Rue will take is family. Uh, we'll get right into that question since you both have to answer. Uh, your question is. In Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, what specific type of animal do the Zelinskis befriend and end up accompanying? Lead back to formula took the lead on the last question, 24-23. Yes. yes. Great game so far. Love Great it. Game. Yeah. Hands down. Uh, we'll go to Rue. Antonio Banderas. And Jake. Dead ants. 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 Ants is correct. Both gaining the point there. 25 24 as you get to the last question, which now you can convert, which is in what category? In the category of biopics. All right. So your question. 
What newspaper do Robert and Paul work for in Zodiac? We need the full name. Dylan, you have an art when you read these questions. The things in like the parentheses after the question, you just make it sound like a supernatural, like conversational thing. Hmm. You just Thank throw you. it away. And I admire the way you read questions. Thank you. I feel like when I read the question itself, it can sound a bit phony. Hands down. I uh, will go to sexual chocolate. San Francisco Chronicle. And we'll go to back to formula. San Francisco Chronicle. San Francisco Chronicle yeah, okay, is yeah. back. Uh, so with that, I run number four. I have back to formula lead 26, sexual chocolate 25. If anything can happen as we get into round number five, which is typically round number three, it is your pick your poison round. You've created a big board of categories. Uh, in which the, you've drafted, uh, you'll not get to draft again. So once you take a category, your opponent cannot take that category. Once you each have four categories, you'll be able to give them a one, two, three, and four point value. We go to those mathematical elimination and a winner. Uh, your categories on the big board tonight are fandom, directors, comic book movies, 2010s, action adventure, sci-fi fantasy, comedy, and Oscars. We'll go ahead and let them draft. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, our teams have drafted their categories, and so we are ready to roll. Sexual Chocolate, since you are behind, what category would you like for your one-point question? Oscars, right? Yeah, we'll go with the Oscars. We're going to go Oscars. All right, Oscars it is. Um, and since uh, I asked back for them before, I'll ask them to you now. Uh, so your uh, first question here, your one-point on the category of Oscars mm -hmm. is... City Slickers won what Oscar? Best Supporting Actor. Yes, for, Jack uh, Palance. Yeah, Jack yep. Palance. Best Supporting Actor, Final Edge. That is correct for one point. Uh, what would you like for, or no, now that we're tied. Sorry, that was how close it was. Uh, we back over to Back to Formula. What would you like for your one point question since you have more questions available to you? And? Yep. You count. Yep. I made it. Yep. I made it. I mean, so we were, so were we. So, I mean, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. <laughs> All right. So then, your one point question in fandom. You will find a character with the nickname of the Grim Eater in which Pixar film? The Grim, the Grim Eater. Eater. Ah, the fuck. The Grim Eater. What's an eating? <laughs> um, that's a Luca, maybe. I don't know. Let's go, Luca. Uh, Luca, final answer. That is incorrect. When you said, What's an eating Pixar movie? I was trying very hard not to break the answer is Ratatouille. <laughs> oh, the Grim uh, Eater. So, with that, we're still tied at 20, uh, 26 apiece. Uh, both at the same amount. We'll go back to section of chocolate. What would you like for your two point question? Comedy? Yeah, let's do it. Comedy. Comedy. All right. Your two pointer in the category of comedy is who plays Allison in Knocked Up? Catherine Heigl. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Catherine Heigl, quite much. That is correct for two points in the lead. So we'll bounce back to back to formula. What would you like for your two point question? Uh, you want to take directors? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. All right. Send your question in, question in the category of directors. Who directed Lorenzo's Oil? George Miller. Okay. Final answer. That is correct for two points. All right. That's a tight one. We go back to sexual chocolate. What would you like for your three-point question? Action, adventure. Let's 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 do it. Let's go all action. Action adventure. Here. All right, action adventure. Your three point question is: In Kingdom of Heaven, how does Sibylia kill her son? 
So that's the Orlando Bloom one. Yes, um, with I'm Liam Neeson. Like Queen. Yeah. Uh, does she drown him? Does she throw him over somewhere? I, I, I uh, drop him somewhere. We can use a repeat, but because I haven't seen this, unfortunately. Have hey. you seen it? Remember? I honestly don't remember that part. Four. Three. I'm going to repeat it once at two. I mean, I'm Five. not. I... Hold on, let him repeat it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Your question again. In Kingdom of Heaven, how does Sibylia kill her son? Yeah, because I'm trying to, I don't know if it's an age thing. Like, so maybe you're throwing him off or drowning him or, or because it's either. said during the Crusades, I could think of crucifixion, but, you know, or she just stabbed or she just stabs him. Um, I, I got nothing. My, my gut said drown with a baby, but I don't know if it's an age thing. Do you want to go there? Do you want to go somewhere else? Um, I, I, if, do we want to burn more nothing, of you? Or, no, I mean, if we got nothing. Uh, no, because I don't think we have anything else. Yeah. Sorry if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go with it. Let's go. Let's go. Drowns him, final it. That is incorrect. Uh, we were looking for poisons him. Poison. Okay. Ah, that is a good other one. I didn't get so there. So we'll go uh, back to back to formula for their three pointer. What category would you like? 2010s. Do it. All right. Can't yeah, hear you. Just noticed. Yeah, sorry. So your question in the category of the 2010s: What specific disease is Greta Gerwig's Abby Porter suffering from in 20th century women? Oh, I've seen this movie. Ah, oh, damn it! What would be a specific like um, a specific disease? rheumatoid arthritis i don't know like that is, is that ring a bell <laughs> i was thinking something more mental like um you, you want to use repeat yeah let's use one yeah. repeat the question all right that is your second repeat your question again <clears throat> sorry what specific disease is greta gerwig's abby porter suffering from in 20th century women like it's not yeah, just, like it's it's not Tourette's. It's not. It's going to be like Parkinson's or like dementia. Parkinson's. Or like it's not dementia. It could be Parkinson's. What's Parkinson's? I can't remember. Um, um, Alzheimer's. That, that's Alzheimer's. a memory thing. Let's say Parkinson's. Right. Uh, Parkinson's, final answer. That is incorrect. We are looking for cervical cancer. Okay. <laughs> ah! I'm pretty Prince sure one Sunday. person knew that answer. Unfortunately, our litigation yeah. is not here today. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, we are still tied at 28. We go to Sexual Chocolate for their point partner. They hit. They'll take the lead. I'm forced back to to hit theirs. They miss. We still have sudden death and everything's so crazy. So, all right, Sexual Chocolate, your four-pointer in the category of comic book movies. In Dread... What is the name of the tower block much of the film is set in? Peaches, uh, uh, peach trees. Peach trees, thank you. Let's repeat it just to make sure because I knew it was something, but I'm pretty sure it is peach trees. Yeah. Um, do you want to repeat it? You just want to go because I no, think it's that's let's, it. Let's repeat. Uh, we want to make sure we're perfectly clear. Repeat the question. All right, that is your second repeat. Your question again. In Dread, what is the name of the tower block much of the film is set in? You say it. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the answer is peach trees. Final answer. That is correct for four big points. Okay. All right. Ah. You guys have ended. Here's, no it comes down to this. Yeah. Back to Don't formula. We'll have to answer <laughs> four in sci fi fantasy. If back to formula hits, we're going to sudden death. If, death, if they miss, sexual chocolate will be your champions. Dylan, give them the question in sci fi fantasy. Your question in sci-fi slash fantasy. In source code, how many minutes before the train bomb goes off is Coulter Stevens sent back uh, repeatedly in an attempt to find the bomber? I think it's 12 minutes. 12 minutes? And I'm torn because I was like, it could be 13, but I kind of don't want to overthink it. And the one that came out to me was 12 minutes. We're going to need repeats in sudden death 
Do you want to I'm repeat not, it one time or just go for it? Let's repeat it one time because I'm not 100% not confident. Great. Repeat the question. It, please. All right. That is your uh, third repeat. Your question again. In source code, how many minutes before the train bomb goes off is Coulter Stevens sent back repeatedly in an attempt to find the bomber? I'm going to be kicking myself over a couple of questions. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything better. I, I don't like number questions, but I can only think of 12 minutes. You okay with that? Let's do it. Good game, y'all. 12 minutes, final answer. And your winners and new movie melee team champions. The what? What? Is what? Eight minutes. <laughs> oh my goodness, Dylan. <laughs> it takes I don't know for a moment, even though I love I love the reactions. My yeah. God, Dylan, what a match. Yeah, crazy match. Uh very back and forth, uh super competitive, a lot of lead changes. Yeah, look, uh, it just came down to, I think, uh, back to formula having a, a tricky round three. Uh, there's uh, some tough questions there. Uh, sexual Chocolate uh, had some great pulls, able to get back the lead. Uh, yeah, just crazy from start to finish. Sexual Chocolate uh, ran the deep cuts round. They ran their strength. Uh, yeah, they and they were down by a, a pretty significant amount coming out of round number one. So for them to battle back and then uh, get the win in the end was crazy. What, what are you saying? Okay. <laughs> if Payson wants to do post matches to make it easier, I'm totally frozen. Okay. Well, someone bring in the post match, the people now. Uh, so, second place finishers, starting with the second place finishers. I'm sorry, I'm up thrown all over the place. Uh, Hi. Guys. <laughs> Hi. Uh, guys, how are you doing? Uh, never mind. Uh, so, it's a close match. Uh, how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, losing sucks. It really does. Um, in this situation, I felt really confident as well going into this match. And um, yeah, we blew it. It was simple as that. I'm kind of annoying at I'm kind of annoyed at myself that I said we should take Oscars, because Oscars, a lot tougher. Um, and I knew that we needed a good category because of course two ma title matches in a row, our, our opponents get a strength category and pretty much sweep it. So that's sort of annoying. Um, yeah, like we, before going into this match, we felt pretty confident about this, but we didn't care or I won't say care, but we were not going to be too hurt if we had lost, because we know that the whole point of this title run was to get market championship title. And we did that and that's great. And now we're in, you know, we're in act two, we're in, we're in the second act of our, of our narrative. So, and that's going to be the comeback, but. Yeah, listen, there's a couple questions that I'm not particularly happy with. I don't think that fandom question, I think the one pointer in fandom was a lot tougher than their two pointer in comedy. That's all I'll say about that. And yeah, sci fi is a ticky tacky category. And especially when you get asked a detailed question for a movie you saw 11 months ago, it's, uh, it's always, it's not, it's not great. And yeah, no, I'm not really happy about that. But we played as good as a game as we could have. And like I said before, after they hit the four, like they earned the win at that stage in the game. So congrats to Amaru and, and Ryan. I mean, these are two championship players now. Um, and I, yeah, I think it's Cody has stated. It's like, I, don't, I can't see Amaru not winning multiplex player of the year. So congrats for that. And Ryan's now melee champ. Um, but I now think this should be a best out of five because I uh, thought this is it. I ain't, ain't that. And that's not that's not the end of us. Let's say this rivalry is going to continue. I'm going to still crush your bones into dust. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be relatively quick. Um, yeah, I just I had June twenty eighth written in those tenant notes for I think like a year. So I really hate myself for that. Although it was the four pointer, so like whatever. Like you know, we we still had a loss, so you know that at least gives me that. Uh, Taking Oscars, I think, even though we missed one, we still did relatively we well. It just, it, yeah, it's it's like a combination of things. That our you whole know, plan was to not get 2000s black cinema, and yeah. we sort of just stuck with that as our plan, even after they like swept their category. Like, we was like, let's just avoid that. Like so, I mean, it's it's a lot of things. Like you know, and I think it's a lot of decisions that I think were made by us, honestly. So it's you know. 
it, it that they is won it and we lost it. I think that's as, it, as clear as you can as you can put it. Um, I'm I mean, going to be really it's... annoyed at myself for a, a couple of days, but then after that, we'll just move on. I was going to say, like, even I think even if we like, Sexual Chocolate played a really good game. Like, they did exactly what they needed to do in their strength. Um, they performed really well in the risk round. Um, if like, I mean, I don't think I, I was never going to do it. I don't know if they were considering taking uh, the points for musicals. Like, that would have been crazy. They risked it and got gotten the points for musicals. Do what they had to do in in that. And, yeah, they they crushed round four. Like, there's no no way around it. Like, they played really, really well today. I'm glad that they're champions. Um, I've rewatched my reaction to winning that belt a ton of times. Um, no. Ryan and Amaru enjoy watching your reaction on uh like on repeat it's gonna be it's gonna be really awesome yeah well absolutely i think you guys uh like still it might not have gone your way today but i still think you guys played fantastic and i still think you're one of the best teams uh playing in the league uh here and this is i definitely i definitely think we're gonna see you back uh playing for a title soon uh but uh when you do return is there anyone who you'd be uh, wanting to play in particular Tequila Mockingbird, can we just beat the crap out of these fandom teams? <laughs> I, I, I'm uh, I'm slightly annoyed that these teams do well because they keep getting fandom categories in round two, and I just would like to end that if I could. I mean, we haven't had we haven't like had a good pummeling in a while. Like, they, it, just giving a good pummeling to a team. <laughs> well, you know what? what is... I'm gonna say I'm gonna say we're gonna play. Let's play sexual chocolate after the next title match because uh i feel like that's going to be an opportunity down the line all right well we'll see what happens i don't get why everyone hates tequila mockingbird but uh, thank you guys for showing up we'll put we'll be backstage for now uh, and someone who's ever sorry whoever's controlling the stream please put them backstage i don't have access thank you and now we'll bring in the uh, new champions i'll say this as enthusiastically as possible for you guys since you won sexual chocolate uh you guys you guys did it uh, you uh, parlayed your success from the uh, tag team turmoil, got the belts done in a very hard fought victory, very high scoring and competitive match and just a phenomenal performance, uh, I think, from you guys as a whole. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I believe this is Ryan. I believe this is your first belt in multiplex. Correct me if I'm wrong. You are correct. Um, yeah, so that's exciting too. Yeah. So uh, overall, how are y'all feeling? Match first belt. Uh, I will <laughs> say, look, I I definitely get Jake and Mark's position. Losing really does suck. And, Honestly, going in mentally, I'm just like game plan. Let's work with what we're good at. When it gets down to the deep cuts and the betting and the wrist round, we'll try to be strategic there. But it was just like, especially in round two, because I, I got mixed up a little bit with round four because I thought round four was mainly going to be the slices from round two. So when I thought they picked Oscars, I'm like, oh, they played it smart so they can get their strength in round four. But then thankfully, I'm reminded me, I'm like, oh, okay. But they still got something they were good at. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say one, yes, fuck the Kila Mockingbird. Uh, yeah, y'all can go to hell. Two, Jake, Mark, y'all played amazing. Uh, it was such a great ass match. Y'all are champions through and through. Three, that boy good. That boy good. Yes. Ah, uh, what the hell is happening? I have won a team's belt in both fandom and melee in a year. Oh yeah, I am just I. The, the, the weird thing about this is, as soon as we started, this is the calmest I have been in a match in a very, very long time. Um, probably since the wrong side of the river match. Um, but it would just like we, me and Ryan, even when we slip up, we just work so well together, and we cover each other's backs on a lot of things. Um, and I, I like, I like to think strategies is is big a part of the game is knowledge and we strategically did what we had to do we got the luck of the wheel uh if we would have got any kind of french horror whatsoever this game would have been a fucking knockout uh um, it really would have been different just like they if they would have got black cinema so it's like yo um what is happening what is happening that's all i have what is happening? I'll say we bask in this moment, and yeah, with Rui, yeah, I, honestly, brother, congratulations, man. I mean, honestly, I, I'm excited for the, winning a belt here, mainly at first belt here, but also like I think what helps with what how we work so well is not only do we like cover each other's strengths, but we're always kind of like 
it's kind of like we're literally like laying on we're, we're kind of like interconnected like if i know something well i'm working with it and it, we co- we we will complement each other even if one of us is not feeling co- good on a category and like my past experience here in melee with so many team partners i think it's gotten me to where being in the calm being so calm so it's like okay i missed something don't beat my don't beat yourself up cuz there's always later you can capitalize and if you lose then you can beat yourself up later and you know you know wait for the next match down the road but one thing's for sure i mean jake said earlier on winning the belt's fantastic and while defending it's going to be one thing we'll focus on that down the road but right now winning the belt feels so damn good last thing well, just remember mr randy watson said the children are our future <laughs> well i just needed another quote i'm sorry <laughs> Well, uh, I do have, uh, normally this is the part where I'd ask you uh, who you want to play next, uh, but this is a rare case where we actually do know who you're playing next. Uh, So there's a certain team uh, who defended a certain number of times earlier this year that lost their belt, uh, Mm -hmm. with that being Judgment City, uh, Caleb Boatman, and uh, Jeremy Adams. Uh, So your first defense at the beginning of next season uh, will be against Judgment City. Uh, Thoughts going up against them? So after... I win the fandom belts. I have to go up against probably one of the greatest teams of all time. After winning the melee belts, I have to probably go up against one of the greatest teams of all time. Y'all, uh, though Jeremy might know this, fandom and black cinema is coming straight your fucking way. <laughs> I mean, look, look, we uh, in uh, I mean, at the end of term one, we went up against one of the best, te- one of the greatest teams of all time. So one thing's for sure, I think I can't remember earlier on someone said we were like a measuring stick of great teams. Let's be honest here, man. You got to beat the best in order to be the best. And if we have to go, if we have to take down another great tag team in Melee, then I think we should. Doesn't mean we're not taking you lightly. Look, 100%. They are they're, they're defending. They are multiple defending chance for a reason. And so we want to make sure we're not only next year we'll be on the top of our game, but hell yeah. At this point, Whatever movie you're gonna put down, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna study like a grad student. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I know everything. Yeah, we did. We did beat. We're two for two against top teams, so we'll, we'll make it three for three. Let's go. Yeah, go for the hat trick. All right, sounds good. Well, again, uh, huge congratulations to you guys. This is a great match. We'll put you backstage for now. And yeah, this was a again a fantastic match from beginning to end. So thank you to the competitors for showing up. Thank you to uh, the writers, showrunners, everyone who helps make the show what it is. Uh, we'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of the final act. I don't know where this lands in it. I will see you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Fun storm in the castle. Think it'll like? It would take a